What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension overview for you. So in this video we're going to continue our series on SketchUp extensions for architecture. So this is our series on great SketchUp extensions that have architectural applications. So um, if you're looking for that entire list, make sure to check that out at the SketchUpEssentials.com slash architecture extensions for all of the extensions that we're talking about in this series. Um, so I have also been away for a little while um, and I wanted to talk just a bit about that. So I've been working on a new project and uh, I just wanted to kind of give you a little bit of a teaser about that. It's probably gonna be another week or two before it's ready to go. But um, basically I've been working on a project where I teach you how to use layout. So layout is one of the things I really struggled with when I first started working inside of SketchUp. So I wanted to create a course that gives you really step-by-step -step instruction on how to go from start to finish on creating construction drawings from your SketchUp models. So that's going to be a really in-depth course. If you want more information about that, if working in layout is something that you're interested in, um, make sure you get on the list for more info when it comes out at the SketchUpEssentials.com slash layout course. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so one of the things about SketchUp is its native tools are really great for creating hard surfaces and simple surfaces. So like for example, if you're going to draw like a rectangle or something that's like a rectangular box, um, the tools inside of SketchUp are perfect for that um, because they can create those so quickly and so easily. So even when you're dealing with like curved shapes, like if I was to draw an arc and then extrude this out, you can create these simple curved shapes really easily just by creating a profile and extruding it. However, when you start dealing with more complex shapes, SketchUp's lacking a little bit in the ability to create those forms and surfaces. However, the extension Curvaloft is a free extension from Fredo 6 that allows you to create complex skins inside of SketchUp. And so the way that it works is basically it uses lofting in order to create different skins. So it's got three tools built into it um, for creating different kinds of skins inside of SketchUp. We're gonna focus on the first one and the last one um, but basically the way that it works is if you select um, some arcs like this one for example so these three arcs you can use the loft by spline function in order to create a skin over those arcs so what this does is this comes in here and it divides up those arcs and it uses math to create a face in here and then you can also adjust the way that it uh, interpolates these as well so you can add different lines and edges and things like that if you want to make your faces more or less less uh, complex, there's adjustments you can make in there for those things as well. And so you can also adjust the way that it figures out how to make these curves in order to kind of customize those as well. So while it would have been really difficult to create this face in here manually using this tool, it's really easy. And so that also works for closed shapes like these, where if you were to select them, you could activate the loft by spline tool and you could create a skin across that really easily. So, and one of the cool things about this is you can also come in here and you can adjust things like twist, and other things like that inside of this shape. So if you wanted to give this shape a little bit more of a twist in here, you could adjust this in order to do that. So this gives you options for the way all of these different, uh, this gives you options for the way all of these different shapes are created. You can adjust the way that uh, like the different points come in here and things like that as well. So you can see how creating a shape like this would have been fairly complicated without this tool. And so it's also great for creating surfaces. So if you have like a series of lines like this one, you can in here with curve aloft and you can create a surface across those so it's great for little contours or other things like that and uh, it's really easy to work with once you get an idea of what everything does it looks really complicated and when you mess around with it it's really not that complex but it is really powerful so you could also use that to create shapes like let's say you had a, some edges like this and you wanted to create a face across these, you could select this and use the loft by spline function in order to create that face across here. And you could use the number of segments in here to adjust the way that this looks. So you could really use this to create a really complex face if that's what you wanted, or you could create a really simple one in here as well. 
So loft by spline is great when you have a series of splines in a row um, or curved lines or things like that. But then there's also a tool in here, which I use a lot, which is the skin contours tool. And so the skin contours tool is gonna allow you to take a closed shape like this one, select it, and then add a skin across it. So you can see how as I do this, I can actually create a skin across this face. This is really powerful for creating things like tensile structures and other things like that, that you might have trouble with otherwise. So if we were to look at a more complex example, you can see how this is a number of different faces, or this is a number of different frameworks in here. Well, we could select all of them and just run the skin contours option and you could add skins across all of these really quickly. So you can see how you could skin this out really easily using this tool. And so one of the other cool things about this is this tool can be used to create, and I've talked about this in another video, this tool can be used to create basically quad surfaces. So like for example, right now, if I have this curved road in here with just a regular face, um, SketchUp doesn't really know how to map this material along here. Even if I was to come in here and use an extension like through paint, which allows you to basically UV texture different things, you can see how even with this UV painting texture, SketchUp doesn't really know how to texture this out. However, if you were to use the uh, loft by spline tool and select all of these different curves, you could create a face in here that actually has quad geometry inside of it. And so what that means is basically quad geometry is predictable geometry, meaning it works nicely with other, meaning it works nicely with other tools. And so while over here this isn't mapped properly, if I was to come in here and try to run this with an extension like through paint, which allows you to map things along UVs, you could actually select this material, reapply it, and it would actually follow along with the curves inside of this uh, inside of this shape because we were able to use the extension curve aloft to create a predictable shape in here. So you can see how there's a lot of different applications for something like this that creates quad based faces. So another application is if you wanted to skin out like a ramp. So you could also come in here with the loft by spline function and create a face along these different curves really quickly as well. So, and then you could adjust the way these are created by adjusting the number of segments and things like that. So you can see how creating shapes like this, which would be a little bit more complicated with, um, with a tool other than Curvaloft really quickly. It can also come in here and it can create faces from shapes that merge into other shapes. So you can see how it does a really good job of coming in here and taking this base piece right here and merging it into this circle. And you can come in here and you can adjust the twist on these items as well by clicking on them. So if you want this to be a little bit more of a twisting shape, you can come in here and you can make that change as well. You can also turn on the interpolation or adjust the number of segments that are created in here to really get some control over that mesh that's created. And so let's say for example that you wanted to create a grid across these two items. Well, you could come in here and you could use loft by spline, but then you could adjust the interpolation in here so that you could actually add so that you could actually add like a square grid on top of this face. So um, it's very practical as well if you need to come in here and create things like this really quickly. And so it works for other shapes as well. So like for example, if you had um, a weird shape that has kind of a curve in here and then a couple edges, you could also use this to create a face across these. And we're gonna wanna use the skin contours option in order to do that. So you could also set this where it only creates those lines if you wanted it to do that. So you could also use this to create lines, but not faces if you had a need for that as well. So on the surface, probably the best application for this from an architecture standpoint is going to be the creation of tensile structures. If you're willing to look beneath the surface a little bit and look at kind of what the tool can do, there's actually a lot of different things you can do with this. So leave a comment below. Let me know some of the things you've done with Curvaloft. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.